Hello and uh, welcome back to my video series on my compressed air engine. Um, I finally have a Model 2. Uh, it kind of does work, at least better than the first one, and I'm going to talk all about that later in the video. But yeah, I have the new engine, and I also 3D printed pretty much a prop, you know, like a propeller blade that uh, works a bit better than the flywheel. So we got. Yeah, we've got quite a lot of stuff to talk about in this video, so I'm not going to waste any time. Let's jump right into that. Just a little disclaimer before I jump right into this video. If you haven't seen the first one yet, I highly recommend you go back and watch it, as a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about kind of build off of the first engine. So with that being said, go watch that one, and then yeah, this one will make a lot more sense. So the first engine that I built had Imagine this being the cylinder, right? And that cylinder comes to a closed valve right here, and it goes off in this slot. And then over here, we have a slider plate with a hole in it. And this hole ends up going up and down based off of pretty much a slider valve right here that connects to the crankshaft, okay? And this crankshaft also connects up with the piston here. So how this works is you have air that is coming in from this side and this slider plate being able to move up and down from this crankshaft, it lines up with this slot right here at certain times. So when this piston is getting pushed down or it's in its downward rotation, that is when the, the valve right here opens up and lets air in, which then fills this. And then actually at the bottom of the piston, so like when this is all the way down, there's a slot right here that lets all the pressure that builds up in this chamber and it basically just lets it escape. So I hope with that being said, I hope that explains a bit better how this whole motor works. And uh, yeah, in terms of the things that have changed in this new motor, so this piston right here, uh, the crankshaft itself actually about doubled in size. The extra crankshaft size, which I've added, actually allows the piston to move up and down about twice as high. So I get more displacement with that. And then also what I've done is the walls, like what's the best way to say this? So the diameter of basically the piston chamber, it was one inch, but I've actually increased it to one and a quarter inches, which in terms it basically just made the whole piston wider and it allows more air into the engine itself. So these are the main changes that I made the engine to and with them being made, so far I've been getting better performance out of my new engine. So I'm gonna keep working with it and I'm gonna keep talking about it. I just gotta say that the V2 engine so far, uh, it's actually been working better, but now I'm gonna talk about the propeller part which I have designed and 3D printed myself. Uh, I'm gonna talk about how it printed and yeah, kind of just the effects of using this versus a flywheel. The best part about using a propeller instead of a flywheel is with the flywheel, it can spin basically as fast as it wants and it will create little to no resistance, right? But when I use the propeller, because it pushes air back, it actually creates resistance as it spins, meaning the faster it spins, the more resistance it's gonna have. And I feel like in terms of a testing standpoint, that's better because I will know kind of the highest speed this thing can get up to. And then I can just go from there and try and make it spin faster, work more efficiently. Yeah, you know the drill. Now uh, I'm going to talk about how this engine printed and pretty much what I did to make it work as smooth as it does now. So the engine was printed with the PLA filament, uh, hatchbox PLA, and the total print time for all the parts combined, including the propeller, was 21 hours. Now the parts, for the most part, printed very smoothly. There were some parts where I'd have to go in manually and sand out the insides just to make it smoother. But once I did that, the engine worked like a charm and it basically did what I wanted to do. So uh, in total, I would say this printed very well. Uh, not many things went wrong with it. Not many, th like I didn't reprint any of the parts. I did fix some of the parts, but I never reprinted them. So 
Um, and yeah, the modular design of this engine, kind of how it breaks apart, makes it very useful. If a part does break, it's not that hard to swap it out if need be. So, all right guys, I really do hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, this was video two in the 3D printed engine series. I will be making more on this in the future. So if what you saw was semi-interesting, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And with that being said, I'm Graydon and I will see you in the next video.